This morning we will be doing our scripture reading from the Old Testament book of Ezra, chapter 9, verses 5 through 15, and that can be found in your Bibles in the pews on page uh, 746 and 747. Listen to the word of the Lord as it is read. Then, at the evening sacrifice, I rose from my self-abasement with my tunic and cloak torn and fell on my knees with my hands spread out to the Lord, my God, and prayed, Oh, my God, I am too ashamed and disgraced to lift up my face to you because, my God, our sins are higher than our heads and our guilt has reached to the heavens. From the days of our forefathers until now, our guilt has been great. Because of our sin, we and our kings and our priests have been subjected to the sword and captivity, to pillage and humiliation at the hands of foreign kings as it is today. But now, for a brief moment, the Lord our God has been gracious in leaving us a remnant and giving us a firm place in his sanctuary. And so our God gives life to our eyes and a little relief in our bondage. Though we are slaves, our God has not deserted us in our bondage. He has shown us kindness in the sight of the kings of Persia. He has granted us new life to rebuild the house of our God and to repair its ruins. And he has given us a wall of protection in Judah and Jerusalem. But now, O oh our God, what can we say after this? For we have disregarded the commands you gave through your servants, the prophets, when you said, the land you are entering to possess is a land polluted by the corruption of its people. By their detestable practices, they have filled it with their impurity from one end to the other. Therefore, do not give your daughters in marriage to their sons, or take their daughters for your sons. Do not seek a treaty of friendship with them at any time, that you may be strong and eat the good things of the land and leave it to your children as an everlasting inheritance. What has happened to us is a result of our evil deeds and our great guilt. And yet, our God, you have punished us less than our sins have deserved and have given us a remnant like this. Shall we again break your commands and intermarry with the people who commit such detestable practices? Would you not be angry enough with us to destroy us, leaving no remnant or survivor? O oh Lord, God of Israel, you are righteous. We are left this day as a remnant. Here we are before you in our guilt, Though, through, though because of it, no, not one of us can stand in your presence. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I mentioned in our October newsletter, this sermon represents the completion of a goal that I set out for myself a couple of years ago. That goal being to preach at least one sermon on each book of the Bible during my tenure here in Saratoga. With Ezra, the last book that I had not preached on is now being preached on. As I was preparing this message, I was reminded of a line I heard many times while I was taking classes at Fuller Theological Seminary. And that line concerns the role of the preacher. That 
want that quote is, the role of the preacher is to afflict the comfortable and to comfort the afflicted. In this passage, Ezra is definitely taking that man mantra to heart. And perhaps this message will afflict some of you as well. If so, I would encourage you to see if perhaps the Holy Spirit is encouraging you to make some changes in your life. Ezra, along with his colleague Nehemiah, is serving as a priest in Jerusalem at the start of what is often called the post-exilic era. <clears throat> Israel and Judah are still under foreign rule, but the ruling authority is now the Persian Empire who has defeated the Babylonians. The Persian rulers had been kind enough to allow those Jews who were sent into exile by the Babylonians to return to Jerusalem. They, the Persians also agreed to allow the Jews to rebuild the temple that the Babylonians destroyed. And when people threatened to interrupt the building of the temple, the Persians even brought guards to help protect those who were building the temple. While things were beginning to get back to normal, they weren't quite there yet. But at least things were improving. In some ways, we here in Wyoming might be able to relate a little bit to the situation Ezra is addressing. After all, we are not back to normal yet after the restrictions placed on us in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And while we're not back to normal, at least we are able to meet in person and not try to figure out how to get on Zoom to have our worship service. As we pick up Ezra's historical account, we find that he is offering a prayer of confession to God after a period of either self-abasement, as the NIV puts it, or fasting, as other translations put it. And the Hebrew here can be translated either way. He starts his prayer by saying that he is ashamed and disgraced because our sins are higher than our heads. While Ezra individually might not have sinned greatly, and based on what I've seen in Scripture, Ezra was a pretty holy person, but he recognizes that the sins of his people are his sins as well. While we may not like it, we suffer the consequences of the sins of our nation, and yes, even the sins of our denomination, whether we individually are guilty of them or not. Just as Ezra recognized the fact that all of his people can and do suffer as a result of corporate sin, we too need to recognize that we suffer the consequences of corporate sin and the sins that our community commits. Ezra continues his confession by saying that from the times of his forefathers, and he's going clear back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, until now, our sins have been great. And as a result of the people's sinfulness, they have been subjected to sword, captivity, pillaging, and humiliation. And all of this is in reference to the Babylonian exile, God's punishment for the people's disobedience to the commands of the Almighty. As I look at the condition of our country, I cannot help 
but wonder, as some of you are, I know, because you have asked me this question as well, are the troubles we are facing today a punishment from God for mocking his word? As we watch the news, it doesn't take more than five minutes for us to be reminded that we are six plus months into a pandemic from the COVID disease. On top of that, the western states are facing endless forest fires that have filled our air with smoke and have resulted in loss of lives, property, and have scarred our beautiful landscapes. Other parts of this nation are suffering from a hurricane season that is so active that the weather service ran out of names uh, and are now naming the tropical storms by using the Greek alphabet. They recently had tropical storm Delta. Delta is the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet. So we have 26 named storms, plus now four others after we ran out of names. Could it be that these disasters are a result of the sins of not taking proper stewardship of our environment? Then if we stick with the news much longer, and fortunately it's beginning to decrease a little bit, we can see that there are numerous violent protests and counter-protests as a result of the racism and the sad history of slavery in our country's history. Besides the racism, and questionable, questionable management of our environment, there are many other actions that our nation has taken that shows that we as a nation have rejected God's law. Furthermore, many of our mainline Christian denominations, including this one, have either been silent or worse yet, approved of these sinful actions of our society and government. Whether we condone these activities individually or not, we, like Ezra, are suffering the consequences of corporate sin that is the result of actions taken. In verse 8, Ezra mentions that the people are now in a brief period where the Lord has been gracious to them. There is a remnant remaining in Israel. The temple is being rebuilt. While not perfect, at least some positive things are happening, just like we can see in Wyoming some positive things happening. Our schools are back to meeting in person. Our churches can worship in person. We're not at perfect yet, but at least there's some improvement. One of the signs that Ezra mentions as a positive sign is that even in their captivity, God had been with them. Verse 9 continues by pointing out that uh, the new masters over those who had been sent into exile have been kind enough to grant permission for those who were in exile to return to their homeland and to rebuild. Just as God was with Israel during their time of exile, God was and still is with us even through the COVID pandemic the fires, the hurricanes, and even the violence. Then, in verses 10 through 12, Ezra sounds the alarm. Israel is not out of the woods yet. The people are still persisting in their sinful behavior. And the behavior that Ezra is focusing on now 
is Israel's intermingling with other inhabitants of the land through marriage and also their propensity to make treaties of peace among the inhabitants. In Deuteronomy 7, verse 3, God commanded the people of Israel not to give their sons and their daughters in marriage to those who were living in the land. He knew that the intermingling between his holy people and the polluted people of the land that they were taking would result in God's people becoming polluted as well as the people in the land. Just as you cannot take polluted water and make it clean by merely pouring in some clean water, the intermingling between God's holy people with people that were polluted would not result in the polluted people becoming clean, but would, what would happen was that the holy people would become polluted. We, like the people Ezra is addressing, live in a land of polluted people. Because that's the case, we need to make sure that we do not allow society to pollute us as well. In Deuteronomy 11a, we are told to keep God's commandments. Ezra in verse 13 declares that the people have been punished less than their sins deserve. I believe the same thing can be said about us as well. The year 2020 has indeed been a tough one for all of us. I am sure I am not the only one who can't wait till January 1st, 2021 and hope that at least we will get some sort of a new start. However, in verse 14, Ezra brings up a chilling question. He asks, shall we again break your commands? Then he offers this sobering thought. If we continue in our detestable ways, would not God be angry enough to destroy us? Paul, while addressing the church in Galatia, offers this warning in the sixth chapter of Galatians. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So what can we do to change the course we are on? The first thing we can do is to follow Ezra's lead. We can acknowledge our individual sinfulness and repent. We can also acknowledge the corporate sin of our nation. We live in a nation that has ignored God's commands. Our society does not accept the truth that there is only one way to salvation. Actions that God declares as detestable, our society condones as merely personal choice, no different than when I go to the Hotel Wolf and I choose between having a hamburger and their fish and chips. This week, during the Senate Judicial Committee confirmation hearings, we saw a number of senators questioning Judge Amy Comey Barrett and pressing her to say that she supports some of the detestable actions that the Bible lists if she was confirmed to the Supreme Court. Our society uses peer pressure in an attempt to make us conform to their polluted ways. Let us not be conformed to society's evil ways, but let us be transformed by the renewal of our minds 
to stand firm and declare those actions God finds detestable as sin. As our minds are renewed, Paul promises in Romans 12 that then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Next, we can make sure that we do what we can to elect leaders who come the closest to following God's commands. Now notice I said come closest. Unfortunately, I have looked at four different candidates all running for president, both third party candidates and the two main party candidates. I'm not happy with any of them. In 16 days, we have a general election. We need to take the time to examine the candidates and their positions. But do not merely look at what they say, but also how they act. Make sure we exercise our rights to vote on Tuesday, November 3rd. My friends, let us be like Ezra. Let us be willing to confess our shortcomings, both individually and corporately. Then, let us sound the alarm that we must take God seriously. God has not punished us as severely as our sins deserve. God is a gracious God, but let us make sure that we do not continue to mock God, but instead repent and turn from our wicked ways. When we do that, God will then hear our prayers and will heal our land. Amen. Amen. Amen.